inside there feeling hungry now we eat these foods because they taste good but at the same time because they provide us with protein proteins are made up of polypeptides and polypeptides are made up of strings of amino acids. Now, why are these amino acids colored differently? Is it to make the picture more colorful? Or is there a more serious reason? Welcome to BioWorld, where I'm going to help solve this question. But first, let's look at the STPM syllabus. In the syllabus, we have sections A and B discussing amino acids. I'll start with B where I'll introduce to you the structure of an amino acid. Amino acids are organic molecules. So they will be made up of the elements carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Now, amino acids will have one extra element that is very important, which is nitrogen. Some amino acids can have sulfur, but this is not compulsory. Let's arrange these molecules to make an amino acid. We'll start with the center, carbon. Carbon can make four bonds. So we see the bonds will attach to hydrogen nitrogen and another carbon. Now nitrogens can make three bonds. One bond is already attached to carbon, leaving two free bonds here, which will attach to hydrogen. The carbon on the other end can also make four bonds, but one bond is already attached to the center carbon. And then we see it has a double bond and a single bond. So the double bond will attach to oxygen. And this single bond will attach to hydroxyl. So now we see there is one single bond here that is not attached to any molecule yet. It actually will attach to a group of molecules called the side chain. Side chains can be made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and yes, this sulfur, or sometimes even nitrogen. So this is the structure of an amino acid. This end, the NH2, is the amino end, whereas this end, the COOH, is the acid end. Now, amino acids, when placed in water, can rearrange a little bit. Let me show you. When amino acids are in an aqueous solution, the nitrogen will attract the hydrogen ion from the acidic end. So now, the amino end will have an extra hydrogen, an extra bond, and this leads to the nitrogen becoming positively charged. The loss of the hydrogen on the acidic end will cause the single bond oxygen to become negatively charged. However, the amino acid is not an ion. This is because the positive charge on the amine end and the negative charge on the acid end balance each other out. What you need to understand is that amino acids can be written as seen earlier in the form of NH2, CH, COOHR or it can be written in the charged form that is NH3 positive, CH, COO negative, R. Now that you know the structure of the amino acid, let's return to the syllabus. We shall now move on to the 
classification of amino acids based on their side chains. The side chains cause four main classes of amino acid to form, which are polar, non-polar, acidic, and basic. Altogether, there are 20 different side chains, which will form 20 different amino acids. The 20 will be classified into four groups. The first group are the non-polar amino acids with non-polar side chains, that's nine. Then there are six polar amino acids with polar side chains. Only two acidic amino acids with acidic side chain. And finally, the three basic amino acids with basic side chains. Let's begin with the non-polar amino acids. Non-polar amino acids will have side chains that are made up of hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons will contain either hydrogen or carbon with hydrogen. Carbon and hydrogen are non-soluble, making this amino acid non-reactive. So, proteins that have non-polar amino acids are very suitable as structural proteins, such as the proteins of your hair or your skin. Now, this is an example of a simple non-polar amino acid where you can see the side chain is only hydrogen. I show you some other examples of non-polar amino acids that have hydrocarbon chains such as CH3, 3 carbons or even 4 carbons long. So since they all have side chains made up of only carbon and hydrogen, they become non-polar amino acids. But let me show you another group of non-polar amino acids that can be a bit confusing to identify. Have a look at this non-polar amino acid. Identifying its side chain is not that easy since the side chain is arranged in a cycle. When you are faced with a structure of an amino acid that is quite confusing, it is advised to identify the amine end, the acid end, and the hydrogen. So once you have identified these three fixed structures, whatever is left over will become the side chain. Now the side chain is clearly visible and you can see it is made up of hydrocarbons, making it a non-polar amino acid. Here's another example where the side chain is made up by a benzene ring. Now the benzene ring is also made up of hydrogen and carbon, making it another example of a non-polar amino acid. Now I'll show you something more difficult. This molecule has a side chain with the benzene ring, but you can see the pentagon ring here has nitrogen. Normally, side chains containing nitrogens will be considered as basic amino acids. But in this case, we still consider it not polar because the nitrogen is trapped inside the ring structure. Therefore, it is unable to carry out any reaction. The final example of a non-polar amino acid is the one that has a side chain containing sulfur. Sulfur is also a reactive atom, but here it is trapped in between two hydrocarbons. Therefore, it is unable to be reactive, making it a non-polar amino acid. Polar amino acids have side chains made up of hydroxyl groups, which means oxygen will be present. Since oxygen is electronegative, it can carry out hydrogen bonding. This makes polar amino acids slightly soluble. However, the hydroxyl groups will not ionize. 
So polar amino acids cannot become ions. Proteins that contain polar amino acids are suitable for biochemical processes like enzymatic reactions or even antibody reactions. This is the simplest example of a polar amino acid called serine. The side chain has CH2 ending with the hydroxyl group OH. Other examples also show hydrocarbon and the hydroxyl end. Likewise, here we have a hydrocarbon, then we have a benzene ring and ends with the hydroxyl group. So these are clear examples of polar amino acids. Let me share with you other examples that are not so clear. In this polar amino acid, you cannot find a hydroxyl side chain. Instead, there is nitrogen. And as I mentioned before, when nitrogen is present in the side chain, it is usually mistaken for a basic amino acid. So what makes this amino acid polar? The presence of the oxygen. Although it is not in the form of OH, the oxygen here is still able to carry out hydrogen bonding, making it a polar amino acid. Same goes for this amino acid. It has a longer side chain, but the presence of the double bond oxygen will enable it to carry out hydrogen bonding. Now the next one we find does not have a double bond oxygen, nor does it have the hydroxyl group. Yet, it is a polar amino acid due to the presence of sulfur. Now, you may be thinking of the non-polar amino acid which also has sulfur. But you see, the sulfur in the non-polar amino acid is trapped in between the hydrocarbon chain, making it unable to be reactive. But over here, you see the sulfur is at the end of the side chain. And this sulfur, of course, will not do hydrogen bonding, but it will carry out another type of bonding called disulfide bonding, which makes it soluble too. The third group of amino acids are the acidic amino acids that have side chains containing carboxyl groups. COOH. Carboxyl groups in the presence of an aqueous solution will ionize. So the acidic amino acid is negatively charged in an aqueous solution. This makes the amino acid hydrophilic and proteins that are involved in biochemical reactions will have a lot of acidic amino acids. Acidic amino acids are easy to recognize. As in the example of aspartic acid, you can see the side chain ends with the negatively charged COO. Similarly, the other acidic amino acid is also not complicated, only slightly longer, but has the same ending of COO negative. Some group of amino acids are the basic amino acids with the side chains made up of amine group NH2. And in an aqueous solution, NH2 likes to pull another hydrogen ion, making itself become positively charged. So basic amino acids are also hydrophilic and are also found in proteins involved with biochemical reactions. Lysine is the simplest form of a basic amino acid. It has a long side chain ending with the positively charged amine group. Another example of a basic amino acid is this molecule that has a long side chain ending with many nitrogen molecules. I would just like to remind you of an example of a polar amino acid that I introduced to you earlier and this amino acid also ended with a nitrogen molecule. However, it is not considered basic for two reasons. Firstly, it is not positively charged and secondly, it has oxygen present. Remember, 
the oxygen will carry out hydrogen bonding. In basic amino acids, there are no oxygens. Now I show you the last amino acid. This amino acid has a side chain rich with nitrogen but arranged in a ring structure. Let me remind you of another amino acid that I introduced to you under non-polar group which also had nitrogen in a ring structure. But this molecule was considered non-polar. Two reasons. First reason, it is not positively charged, unlike the basic amino acid here. And the second reason is this nitrogen is in the middle of the side chain. This non-polar amino acid ends with a hydrocarbon benzene ring, unlike the basic amino acid where the side chain ends with this positively charged nitrogen. So I have introduced all 20 amino acids and highlighted to you the difference in their side chain. So maybe now you know why these amino acids are colored differently. And if you observe, there are only four colors, green, purple, yellow, and orange, representing the four groups based on side chain. So in my next video, I'll talk about how amino acids become polypeptides and proteins. Until then, bye-bye.